Hello there. My name is Jaya Ba. You want to jam me for what's on WBCA 102.9 FM Boston Thorker Community Radio Station. My guest today is Elizabeth, is, is Elizabeth Pia from Massachusetts. How 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 Absolutely. So, okay. So, can you tell me a little about yourself? How you got started as Miss Massachusetts? Because I saw your show, and I also honored to see you crown as Miss Massachusetts. It's, it's, it's such a blessing. So, yeah. It is. Yeah. So I am Elizabeth Pierre, as you said. I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and my family's from Haiti. So I'm actually a first generation American citizen, the only person in my family born in America. So that's always been something that's kind of defined me and drive me is like finding that balance between my Haitian culture and my American culture and how to blend those two together to be who I am today. And then in terms of getting started in the Miss America organization, I came back from my undergraduate school degree at Syracuse University where I danced all four years and I came back home and I missed dancing. And so I did, I just did a basic Google search and then I found the Miss Boston and Miss Cambridge scholarship competition. And, you know, just kind of went out on a limb, put myself out there, got to meet new people. I got to choreograph, dance on a stage and really wasn't expecting much from it. It was my first competition within this organization um but then that night i took home the title of miss cambridge and then won a one thousand dollar scholarship as well and so from that i got to book my ticket to miss massachusetts which was supposed to happen that following july but because of the pandemic got pushed back to the next july um so i was miss cambridge for 18 months then competed for miss massachusetts and got that title as well and then left with twelve thousand dollars in scholarship so a lot of people don't know that this organization is a scholarship organization and so it's really changed my life in terms of student loans um but earlier this month i got to compete on the miss america stage and got second runner-up and so that was like you said such a blessing yes absolutely yeah so so what made you want to become miss america what what got you interested in that so yeah, like I said, starting off in the organization was really just spur of the moment, just wanting to experience new things. But as I was the title holder in this organization, I realized the power and the purpose and the impact that this organization has on communities. And so me, well, each title holder gets the opportunity to pick a social impact initiative, which is kind of like a platform, what it is you want to focus on throughout your year. And for me, mine was we hear you empowering youth voices. And so I've always been passionate about empowering youth voices, making sure their voices are in decision making, and just making sure that adults and community leaders listen to the young people around them. And so with that, I've done workshops, I've visited schools. Um, and that was something that I would have hoped to continue as Miss America. But even though I don't have that title I can still continue it as Miss Massachusetts and afterwards as well so um, it's always just been about empowering the voices of, of young people amplifying their stories and their their experiences and their ideas because our young people are innovative they're yeah. so innovative um, so I'd love to see their voices more involved well that's wonderful to hear so what are your so what are your plans for for next year are you gonna want to want to think about when I get in the fall in, in the fall year ahead Again, for Miss America? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the fun thing about Miss America or interesting thing about Miss America is you can only compete once. So I, you can uh, only represent your state one time and you get one opportunity at Miss America. So when people say like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, it really, really is. And so I was blessed to to become Miss Cambridge on the first try, become Miss Massachusetts on the first try, and then compete at Miss America. But there are so many young women who compete at the local le level um, many times, and then once you get become Miss Massachusetts, that's that's it. That's kind of where your, your journey um, in the organization ends. <laughs> but you could always come back as a, as a volunteer and to help out and, and do other things, which I hope to, to do because I really have fallen in love with this organization. And so... Yeah, so I won't be able to compete on the Miss America stage again, but I am so proud of the performance that I did put out there. Again, second runner-up in a new world. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, so that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. So what inspires you? What gives you inspiration and hope, you know, to do what you do? Because because everything you do is, is such a, everything you do, you touches, you know, you always succeed, you know, and you do it so well. So that's why, that's, that's what inspires me to have you on my show. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I would say the biggest thing that inspires me is kind of just changing narratives and changing stories. I think one thing I always talk about is after my uh, judge's interview, 
when I was competing for Miss Cambridge. So what a lot of people don't know, there's a 10 minute interview with the judges, where it's you back and forth, rapid fire questions um, with, the, with the panelists of people who are picking the next title holder. And I did that for the very first time competing at Miss Cambridge and afterwards, fell into tears because I thought I did horrible. There are women around me who have been competing for years. I was like, what am I doing here? Do I belong here? Imposter syndrome, basically, you know? Um, but then growing into this, this role and into a woman in this organization, I found that this is really something for every woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the motto is preparing the world for great women and preparing great women for the world. And I truly mean, and I truly believe that that means all women. Mm -hmm. And so with my role in this organization, I try my best to go into communities who may have never seen a Miss Massachusetts, who may have never even seen Miss Cambridge, you know, and, and let them know that this is an opportunity for them. It's a growth opportunity, professional development. Um, but I try to do that in all aspects of my life, not just in this organization. Being a black woman in the society does not always come with, you know, a happy-go-lucky experience and with people who want to cheer for you and root you on. Um, but I hope to be that woman that cheers for people, no matter what they look like, no matter where they come from. And so that's always been something that's really important to me. And I do that working with the young people that I work with, but also I'm pursuing a Master of Social Work, too, at Boston College. And so I hope to do that with my social work career in the future as well. That's wonderful to hear because we, we need more sisters, sisters like yourself, you know. And right, right. We sure do, yeah, yeah. So, so how did COVID affect you? I mean, even shut up, how did this COVID kind of affect your career as Miss Massachusetts? Mm. So, COVID began when I was still Miss Cambridge, okay. and up until then, being a title holder is something that is very with people, right? You're personable, you're in communities, you're on the ground, you're meeting people, um, experiencing different things. And so that came to a halt. <laughs> that came to a halt. And I'm sure there were title holders across the country, including myself, who were like, what do we do now? And so it really was important to kind of shift what it means to be a title holder and how to connect with people when you can't do it face to face. And so I really fell into social media uh, and kind of really used that as a tool to connect with people, to connect with organizations. I've done a ton of Instagram lives. I did one with Transition House, which is a domestic violence shelter in Cambridge, and kind of talked about the importance of that, the importance of eradicating domestic violence, but also kind of fell into accidentally becoming a TikTok content creator. <laughs> I did like one TikTok video in the beginning of the very, very beginning of the pandemic that kind of blew up and ended up being part of an international campaign and things like that. And so I've been able to really capitalize on uh, that app and create a community of people who care about Black women, who care about social justice, who care about empowering youth voices and who are interested in the Miss America organization as well, because I've been able to just defy stereotypes and mm -hmm have real conversations with people about what it means to, to be me and to be someone in today's society. And so I, I really would, I, I just think social media has been such a huge help in, in making sure that I can still do the job well, even though I can't always be around people. Um, but outside of that, I've also raised funds and, and done food drives and can drives for the people who, who need it. Um, and that's been another way that I've been able to give back as well. Oh, that's all of it here, because, you know, giving back is always important, you know. Absolutely. Good people, good people helped you give back, you know, give you a, a, a definite degree, you know, yeah. Wow, so, yeah. So um, so what advice can you give, do you want to give people that want to be the next Ma Ma Massachusetts or that want to be inspired to do what you do? What advice can you give them? Mm, a thousand percent to trust the journey, um, because there are women who compete for years and years and years and years and years. I, you know, we met our whole Miss America class, which is 51 women, all 50 states in DC. And it ranges from women who were first time competitors like me, mm -hmm. to women who competed for their state title six, maybe seven times before getting onto that stage, but they still made it onto that stage. And so to, to not let no's define you, um, but to really let no's be an opportunity for you to continue to learn, continue to grow, to continue to understand why this is something you want, um, mm -hmm. continue to understand the impact that you hope to have so that when you're given the opportunity, you can just dive head first and be the best that you can possibly be at the job. So really trusting the journey because there were days where I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> why am I here? Um, but to just, continue to believe in myself and tell myself that I, that I can do it. So to anyone that's interested, 
trust the journey, but also reach out to me too. I, I really hope to be a, a connection and someone that people can reach out to if they have any questions, if they are interested, if they just want to talk about it. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to chat. That's wonderful. That's always good to hear you. So how do you deal with, you know, how do you deal with, you know, I'll deal with, 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 with racism, stereotypes, because they know that, you know, sometimes, you know, mismatch, you, you have to deal with, deal, you know, racism and judges, you know, how, how do you deal with this one? Does, it, does that affect, affect you, that affect you? Sometimes it'll make you sad, because I know it's... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I've actually experienced upfront discrimination or racism to my face with okay. this role, um, but I think like so many systems that are in America, like the Miss America organization for the first, I believe 30 years that it was created, black women weren't allowed to compete okay. because the standard of beauty was white woman. And that goes for a lot of systems in America, right? There were so many places where black women were just not allowed or just not considered beautiful. Um, but like many other systems, this organization has also continued to evolve and continue to kind of recognize the ways that they have faltered um, mm -hmm. and, and move forward. And so I'm happy to be someone in this organization today as the first Haitian Miss Massachusetts, right? To show people like, listen, just because we weren't allowed in this before does not mean we can't come in now and be trailblazers and be amazing. And so that's really been a message that I, that I've hoped to share and I've continued to share mm -hmm. um, just in this, in this position. And so I've always tried to just remain ready because I know not everyone is ready to, to see more firsts. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's important to just have conversations with people and let people know why like this is great and I also want to one day be in a society where there are no more firsts right there isn't no more first black woman to do this or first Asian woman to to do that because you know we've been involved and been welcomed into all spaces you know absolutely yeah I definitely agree you know so what's that what do you like to do for fun and travel when you're not you know yeah. I love I, I love downtown. I think right now, between balancing my part-time work, part-time school, and Miss Massachusetts stuff, I don't have that much time for downtown. But mm -hmm. when I do, I love traveling. That's also been very difficult with the pandemic. I uh, My junior year of high school, I went on a trip to Guatemala for three oh, weeks wow. with my school. Uh, and yeah, it was a mission trip. And we that just sparked all of my love for travel since then i've been to like seven or so countries and i hope to see more more of the world um, outside of that though i mentioned i love dancing i always say it's my favorite form of communication when i don't have the words to say something it's just always been a passion of mine and i always feel super fulfilled when i'm on a stage just performing and letting the music do mm -hmm. its thing you know <laughs> um so dancing traveling and then of course just spending time with my loved ones my family my friends my dog i have a dog um yeah. so yeah it's my that's, free time <laughs> so, so what, what, what are your plans for, for plans for tonight new year's eve time what are your plans for tonight I'm actually going to be in the Boston First Night Parade. Oh, wow. So I'm excited for that. Okay. I'll be walking through with the procession. It starts at Copley, Copley Square. And so, yeah, if you're in the area, if you're at the parade, say hi. <laughs> okay, I'll definitely try and come down. If you come down, is it possible to meet, meet you tonight and at the parade? Will you stick around if we can meet you? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, I'll definitely, I'll definitely try and come down you know, if I can, you know. Awesome. All right, absolutely. Yeah, and um, wow, so... And so, um, so besides from being Miss America, are, are you are you also in, into acting and singing as well? So not currently. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't say currently. I think back in middle school, I did uh, plays and was into theater. And then I was in a school choir up until my my senior year in my church choir as well. Mm -hmm. But then once heading to undergraduate, my undergraduate schooling, that kind of fell off, and I really have honed into dancing uh -huh. i have stepped before too i don't know if you're familiar with stepping oh, yeah. it's like the percussion of the body yeah. yeah so stepping is also something that i love i adore so much fun um so i've kind of i'm a little bit of a jack of all trades but i wouldn't call myself a singer or an actress now just because i've been a little out of practice <laughs> I see, yeah, that's wonderful, because my cousin, cause, cause, I mean, my sister, Misha, also steps, you know, so, yeah, so. Nice, yeah. yeah she's Love a good step, stepper, yeah. And, um, yeah, and because you also remind me of, because you also remind me of, of someone, of, of Gabby Douglas, you know, how she was a first gymnast, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, so, yeah, so, I mean, I actually talked to her on, on, she was really nice, I talked to her, like, on camera, she was really nice, you know, so, yeah, and. Yeah. And, 
It just amazes how how two two African American women can compete for dream show and 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 leave a leave a legacy, you know, like you know, so and and that that's one of the finest features. I see two women like yourself and Gab does, you know, and some Simone Biles trying to make a legacy, you know, for mm-hmm. our, our, you know, So that's what's all about, you know, and that's what inspires me, you know, to go for my dreams, dreams as well, you know. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad I could be of any help or mm-hmm. just any of inspiration. I, growing up, I I grew up in the projects, right? I grew up in the housing developments. My family was not the richest. So there were a lot of people that thought my life was going to go one specific way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really easy to listen to those people and fall into that. But I was just like, you know what? I'm going to make my own path, my own story, my own journey. And never did I ever think that doing that would get me to where I am today, where I an inspiration to other people like that just sounds crazy to me so yeah it's just it's very interesting to 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 be in that position because there are so many women of color that I look up to and to just know that they're young women of color or just people of color period Mm -hmm. looking up to me is just insane (laughs) but I'm also so grateful and blessed to, to be able to have that impact too yeah, she definitely had an impact on my life, you know. So, so definitely, you know. Um, so, so, um, so, what do you see? So, what do you see? Self, you know, I, 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 I guess years from now, what do you see? Self years from now, doing. So, I hope to finish my master of social work at Boston mm-hmm. College and become a social worker. I've mm-hmm. always been, like I said, I've always been interested in working with young people. So, hopefully, in the foster care or adoption mm-hmm. realm of social work which I know would be very difficult, <laughs> but it's something that, I don't know, it's just call, I, I'm just called to do that. Um, and then hopefully later, later on in the future, I have my own private practice where I can just practice therapy um, with, with children and families, children, youth and families. And so that's kind of where I see myself going. That's what I'm going to use all the scholarship money that I've earned from this organization to put towards. Um, and, and yeah, hopefully I'll just be a great social worker in the future. <laughs> I think see, see as a lot of social work, we need more people like yourself, you know, definitely. You know, that's what it's about. So what what do you think what do you think people can do to change the world to, to make the world better in, in your opinion? What can excuse me, what did you say? Uh, so what, do you, what do you think people can do to make the world better to change the world in your opinion? Oh man, that's that's a hefty question because mm-hmm. I don't think there's one thing that people can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it starts by having conversations and listening and, and just taking the time to learn information for yourself and not necessarily the information that your echo chambers and your family and your parents taught you, but like you taking the time to understand and see the world for yourself and then have a conversations with people. But to make the world better, there are so many angles to come at. One thing I always talk about my talk about with the young people I work with is the four eyes of oppression, which is uh, internalized, interpersonal, institutional, and ideological. And those are like four ways that oppression kind of lives in our society. And so if we want to change something like discrimination or mental health or the housing crisis, you have to look at it from all four of those angles. And so I think it starts with understanding what those angles are, understanding your beliefs and your morals and really yours, not what other people have taught you to think, and then start from there, go from there. <laughs> it's a big task to change the world. I, yeah, I definitely agree. I, I definitely agree, you know, it, I de- yeah. Because so much we can do to change the world, but so much we can do, yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about, about running for president of the United States someday, being the first president? Ooh. You know, that is something that is very daunting. And I have never thought about it. (laughs) I've never thought about it until like fairly recently, not president, but just some other office. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever go for president though. But you also never say never. You never know what happens in your life and what road you take that leads you somewhere. Um, But I've never thought of that. And it might be just because I've never seen someone looked like me have that and so I just never knew if it was attainable mm-hmm. but it also just I don't know if that's something that calls me to, mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. so I might do some more thinking on that and see if that's something that I'm interested in I think right now though it really is that path of social work 
Oh yeah, I definitely understand because when I look at you, I kind of you, you kind of remind, remind me of, of Michelle Obama in the first. Do time. I? Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually met her. She was so nice. You know, I met her. You know, a couple of times. Oh, nice. I also, also shook Pastor Obama's hand. He was nice and so nice. I, so I, so I kind of see, see the symbols of you and Michelle Obama because you'd be the first. At, at, so I was looking at you and talking to you. I, I was like, "Wow, you, wow, you, you, you make it definitely make make it." Make it. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, that's why I brought it up, you know, because I think we need. We need more people like yourself to, you know, to change the world. And being president, you can make some wonderful changes, you know. And you know, mm -hmm. to, so that's why I brought it up, you know. Yeah, so you know, yeah. yeah so you, you definitely inspired me, you know. So just talking to you and having a conversation definitely inspired me, you know. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, yeah. Wow. So, 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 did, 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 did you have a good Christmas? What? How? How was your Christmas? Christmas. My Christmas was fine. I think my, my family, we always come together. I think this kind of wave of the pandemic that we're in yeah. right now has made it a little more difficult. But, you know, it's always nice to just pause and be with the people you care about, especially coming right off of Miss America. Mm -hmm. Miss America was the week before. Uh, Miss America was crowned on December 16th. Mm -hmm. So all of that wave of emotion and adrenaline that was on for like a week and a half while at Miss America, it was nice to just pause mm -hmm. and take a breath and be with the ones that I care about and just relax for a little bit just be light and have some fun so uh, that that is what Christmas was and that was really nice to have that opportunity yes I was actually I was actually well, I bought this one for, for Christmas this year in Florida it was wonderful the hot air going for going on Dean Parsh yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like myself, you know, it was wonderful. I didn't want to come back, you know, because I don't want to. <laughs> That's how it is on vacation, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's so hard to come back sometimes. Yeah, especially because especially I don't like the cold weather, the snow, you know, so, you know, right. like, you know, right. so. Yeah, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you, like to, do you, do you mind the winter time, but you don't mind the winter time, you know, I mean. I don't mind. I'm not, so my birthday is December 11th. So <laughs> I like winter time for that. I like winter time for the festivities and the yes. holidays. Mm -hmm. Shoveling snow, though, mm. it's not, no. <laughs> I wouldn't yes. say it's my favorite pastime. <laughs> no. But, you know, I just think it's like cozy to be in the covers and the blankets and the pillows and the hot chocolate. I like that about it. <laughs> yeah. I hear you because I'm not a fan of shoveling, so I want to try more to Florida or, or, or California, but it's somewhat warm, you know. That's fine. Right. Yeah. We yeah. also haven't had that much snow either, which I know, is that's good, you know. I, I have yet, no one's had to really shovel yet in this area. That's good, yeah. I hope it stays that way. It'd be nice, you know, for, for, mm -hmm. for, for everyone that was like that, you know. Yeah. So, have, have, you, thought about, have you ever thought about, about moving, moving to for Florida, California, somewhere warm? I mean, trying something new? I mean, I've thought about it. I think. You know, I've, I've spent my entire life in Massachusetts, except yeah. for the four years when I was in school and I was in Syracuse, New York. Okay. And I've always thought about, like, what if I just venture out and try something new? But I also love my family. <laughs> and yeah. my whole family's in Massachusetts. And so I'm just like, what, how would that be to just not have my family down the street, you know? Um, and so that's always been something that I've juggled with. I would love to try something new one day and, and move out somewhere maybe like Georgia or something, mm -hmm. yeah. not sure where, um, but it's always been in the back of my mind. Well, that's wonderful because my, because I, I, I family in Georgia, so yeah, so. Nice. Yeah, so cool. I, think, I think that worked out for you and me, you know, because, you know, <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. It's always, it's always good to try something new because you don't know what you're missing, right, you know? Right, right. And I think that's why I love traveling so much is that you get to, you get to branch out and see all those things that you've been missing. And it's like, I love Massachusetts. I love Cambridge. I love this area, the greater Boston area with all my heart. It's like, all I know, it's what raised me to be who I am. And it's not a bad thing to just see what else is out there, you know? Absolutely, because I, because I'm I, like you, know, I'm, I'm a fan of travel myself. I love to travel, I love to go places, and meet people like yourself. You know, mm -hmm. it's such a blessing. Every time you, I get a chance to get away, I love it. You know, especially with Florida or or wherever. You know, it's just a blessing. Yeah. I definitely agree. You know, it's always good to, to you know, broad, broad horizons and see what you can what you can do. Right. You know? right. I definitely, I truly agree. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, wow. So, so, so okay. So okay. So so you so this so so next year you. So, 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 it's also probably 2022. You're going to be, you, you, you said you're going to finish up college, I guess, and come to social work. No, so, I actually just finished my first semester okay. of grad school and I'm doing it part time. So, instead of it being two years, it's three. Okay. So, not 2022. Uh, 2022, I'll probably be about halfway through my schooling. 
Oh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so, okay, so, 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 so when are you in grad school, grad school, so you're in, so when are you in grad, grad, grad school now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so, oh, that's wonderful, because you got your bachelor's degree, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's one of you go because I got because because I got my social so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get my bachelor's degree in in me 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 now so nice nice yeah. are you doing that currently or are you doing that in the future I'm doing it right now I start generally doing it I'm taking classes on uh, at Southern New Hampshire University on on nice. social yeah so I'm gonna try and yeah. get get my bachelor's degree in media communications so I can have some of our background because cause, cause just like any people people on travel because mm-hmm. and plus makes more money you know how I choose the money right <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, and and maybe I also I also I also want to become an actor, singer. So yes, yeah, so I feel that having a bachelor, you know, that feel can definitely help get you there. If you meet people, people that will help you. So you know, and mm-hmm. so it's time, time, time to time to do something, you know. You know mm-hmm. Definitely, mm-hmm. For, for, I would say for for your dreams, you know, you can do it, make sure you have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm so because I'm so glad you follow you follow YouTube and become a Miss Massachusetts. That's a wonderful dream to accomplish, in, in, especially in your lifetime, you know. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Some, some people don't want to. Go, go for dreams, go for dreams, and maybe see if you can do you know, and it's mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and I look forward. I look forward to seeing you in in a parade tonight. You know, that try and be there. You know, and are are, are, are you are, are you going to be on a floor, floor or are you, are you walking the parade? I'm going to walk in the parade, hand out beads, start oh, the party. Wow. You know. <laughs> That sounds one. And it's also Copy Square by the train station, by, 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 by the train station right? Copy Square? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 9 p.m.? Bye. It's, I, I believe it starts at 5.30. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 5.30, okay. That's not bad. And so, okay, so, 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 so it's 5.30 tonight. Okay. I can try, yeah. definitely try and make a deal. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Absolutely. Yes. So my uh, Miss Massachusetts contact information on Facebook, there's a Facebook page called Miss Massachusetts. And then on Instagram, it is at Miss America MA. And then on TikTok, if you want to follow me on TikTok, it is at Liz.Pierre. So L-I-Z period P-I-E-R-R-E. And feel free to reach out, ask me any questions, anything you want to know about this organization or if you want to just get to know me too, <laughs> yeah. uh, feel free to reach out. Absolutely, I definitely will. You know, I'm following to talk, you know, because I love your videos and you just find me so much, you know, and many more people like yourself, you know. So I wish you a wonderful, blessed, happy new year. Hope to see you. Hope to see you. Thank you. Too. Look forward to talking in the future and see what's going on for you, Coach. I tell you, definitely, you know, you're great. You're just for greatness, though. I think we both follow, you know. So, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Happy new year to you, too, and everyone uh, that's watching. Let's welcome in 2022. <laughs> God bless you all. Stay safe, you know. Well. Happy new year. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.